If your friends jumped off a cliff, would you jump too? As a kid, my mom always told me this. Everything that I did wrong in every situation that I had a problem with, it was always that quote. So, I've been to a few places in my life that have really had an effect on me. Some more than others. For instance, I've been to Europe, the Middle East, the Caribbean, and jail. <laughs> <laughs> the past couple weeks, I've been debating on what topic this speech should be on. Debating whether to tell you guys about the time that I almost died, the time that I almost got shot, the time I was in a car accident, or the time I got arrested. Um, and I wanted to make the best speech possible, so please don't misjudge. <laughs> um, so, I don't know what your first impression of me would have been, but my name's Lauren. I love Ariana Grande, cats, and watching football with my family. Do you see me differently? <laughs> <laughs> my biggest, biggest weakness growing up was standing up for myself. Ever since I was a kid, I could never say no to the ones that I loved. I would do things, go out of my way, even if I was unhappy. So, there was this one instance, and I really could not say no to my best friend, Gina. It was May 8th, 2018, a week before exams. A week, two weeks before graduation. My best friend asked me if I would go shopping with her for a dra graduation dress. And of course, I said yes. Off to the store, and little did I know what was actually in store for me, pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we had fun shopping, and um, then Gina looks at me and asks me a favor. She said, can I put this in your bag? And flustered, and I knew Gina's family was not financially stable, but I didn't know she would do this. I said, okay, I let it happen. I trembled in my shoes, <laughs> and I followed Gina out the exit of the store. Not thinking, of course. And this man in a white shirt stops us and says, excuse me, miss, do you have some items that you didn't pay for? Gina and I looked at each other with fear. <sighs> I'll never forget what I saw next. I'm sitting in the security guard's office. Gina and I couldn't talk to each other, so we stared. My heart racing, couldn't even think anymore, not that I actually was, but um, a couple hours passed by, what felt like an eternity, and the next thing I know, we're being escorted out of the office. The next thing I see changed my life forever. My family and her mother staring at me with the looks of disdain in their eyes. Meanwhile, I'm handcuffed, put in the back of a police car, and completely emotionless. So, in the police car, I don't know what's happening to Gina, I don't know what's happening to me. I'm thinking, how did I let myself do this? I grew up always believing, say to yourself, and what have I done? So, we arrive at the detective's, uh, detective's office. The next thing I see is his appalled face. He looked familiar. He'd actually worked on my family's case a couple years back on when they got burglarized, but shocked to see me there, to say the word, nonetheless. So he asked, I answered as emotionless as ever. My mom in the room, because I'm a minor, um, and um, long story short, I had convicted a felony in the state of Mississippi. I was a felon. My mom, the only thing she told me was, you just blank up your future. <laughs> so from there, taken to the facility, or in other words, jail, um, this, I have took a mental test to make sure that I wasn't crazy, and I knew. Um, then I was asked to take off my school uniform and in front of this lady, so she made sure I wasn't hiding anything under my clothes, and I'm given my new uniform. 
so many things were running through my head as I'm escorted back to my new home, my cell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm given a rag that they call a blanket. I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. <laughs> but um, so I'm laying in my new bed, and um, of course, I think it's probably midnight, but I have no way to tell at this point. But I look up, and outside of my cell is a girl standing there, staring. I stare back. She smiles. I stare back. And she waves like this. And I'm petrified. But I stare back. Oh. <laughs> so, all these thoughts running through my head. How did I end up here? What is going to happen to me? Am I going to graduate? Where's Gina? Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so the next thing I hear is get up. I get up. Sprung out of bed. Did not sleep that night. Walk outside. We're lined up and accounted for. I'm handed a to-go box full of food, which was then kindly taken from me by my fellow inmate who had been staring at me the night before. <laughs> but once again, I just let it happen. <sighs> Needless to say, being arrested is not fun. Um, but if there's one thing I've learned from it, it's it's my fault, and I can never get over that. I'm the one who did it. I'm the one who didn't stand up for myself. I took the fall, although I didn't, never wanted to go through with it. It wasn't my idea. It wasn't my intention, but I did it. I cracked. My time there was awful, but eye-opening. Everyone there was there for a reason, much lighter than the reason I was there. I deserved to be there, they didn't. And the system is so messed up. And that's one thing I've learned, and um, I want to change that. So, future. Um, so, I've learned to make friends who are going to be there for me and who I can trust. So, if anyone here is afraid of cliffs or heights and won't jump off the cliff, so I don't too, just let me know. We'll have coffee sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and.